Welcome to Event Speak with me, Big John, CEO of Beyond Experiential. As you vastly know by this point, we are an interview show that lives on the Event Speak network. This network is dedicated to every aspect of the all inclusive event ecosystem. So, we've been talking with all kinds of fascinating people that span the whole spectrum. And as you guys know, Event Speak started out and still has its base in the experiential marketing and brand marketing business. But in COVID life and as the whole event industry in total has just been turned upside down, we really want to give everybody an opportunity to find a place to create common dialogue, to have a connection and solidarity, and just navigate these difficult times together. Now, um, as I'm reaching out to my network and getting all kinds of wonderful friends, in some cases people I haven't seen in a long time. Um, they've all agreed to come on to the show, and today's guest is no exception. Um, she is someone that I consider to be one of my best friends in the entire world, and if anyone I've ever called Big Sister, it is her. She is a renowned performer throughout the world. Uh, she is one of the most talented people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Amy has performed on cruise ships around the, the whole encompassing globe. She's currently down in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, performing down there. She's incredible. The fabulous Miss Amy Armstrong. Amy, welcome to Event Speak. Hi, Big John. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. And um, in your own words, Give us, uh, give us the Wikipedia version of who you are and what you're doing. Okay, well, uh, my name's Amy Armstrong. Uh, I am 48 years old, and I'm currently residing here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Um, I came down here last year to perform and have stayed. Uh, actually, I was battling uh, some cancer, and then I did my shows here, and then the pandemic hit, and now I've been here doing live streaming for the last two months. Wow. Um, now, I, I know, uh, of course, because we're friends, and, and what you've, what you've been, your journey has been incredible, Amy, and uh, if I was to describe you, I'd say you have an anomalistic kind of an existence of all the things that you've done in your life and what you've had to overcome. Um, let's talk about the fact that you've overcame cancer. You're you're a young woman, and this was sort of something shocking to you. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was something you didn't anticipate happening. It just you went to the doctor one day, and you found out. Tell me a little bit about what that exactly. was. Exactly. Um, I was down here during Pride Week, which was the end of May of last year, and I was doing shows. And after the shows, I would get a little tired. I'd have a little hitch in my side and thought something was wrong. And then I decided to have an ultrasound done down here in Mexico. A lot of the hospital costs are a lot cheaper in Mexico than a lot of other countries. So for the low, low price of 1,400 pesos, which is $70, I had an ultrasound. They said that it was my gallbladder, that I had to have it out when I went to go for surgery. They found nodules on my stomach lining. And two days later, I was diagnosed with stage three ovarian cancer. That was June 13th of last year. So I went through four chemos, a surgery, four more chemos, and then I came out cancer-free uh, in fe February of this year. And then that's when everything started happening with COVID-19. So I decided to stay down here and perform with some of my band, actually just the guitarist in my band, Fernando Gonzalez. Wow. So you're... Uh, in the last few months is when you just went through all this. I, I know when we spoke uh, yes. a couple months ago, you just My had surgery. My last chemo was uh, January 7th, and I was deemed cancer-free February 7th. <laughs> well, first and foremost... Uh, my most heartfelt congratulations on that, Amy. Uh, I never doubted for a second uh, you roar like the loudest lion that I know, and there was no way anything like cancer was going to hold you down. Um, now, you 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 overcome cancer, um, and yes. you're in the, you're in this foreign country um, where you perform. You've been performing down there off and on now for the last handful of years, right? Well, actually, since. Um... 90, it's been 18 years I've been coming down here. Is it? So wow, since, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, the first time was, first time was off of a cruise ship. I was 30 years old and I was walking around Puerto Vallarta, uh, walked into Garbo's, which is a 
a wonderful little, uh, just little kind of cabaret bar and met the owners, Javier Jimenez and uh, German and uh, Harman. And they were the ones that actually helped me to find a place to perform. And that's how it all started. So yeah, it's been a while. I've been coming down here a long time, longer increments every year because I love it so much. And actually, if I had to be quarantined or on lockdown somewhere, Puerto Vallarta is a wonderful place to be on lockdown. Even with everything closed, it's still beautiful. Um, I can still perform, do yoga, do the things I love to do, and the view is stunning. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, now, obviously, you, you haven't been home. Uh, home for you uh, is, of course, in St. Louis, typically, right? Yes, um, uh, it was Detroit and then Chicago for almost for, 25 years. Which and is how we met. St. Louis, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, so... You don't have a basis of comparison um, necessarily, I'm sure, from what you're seeing on the news or social media and talking to um, friends and family, but what has the experience of COVID-19 been like in Mexico? Is it something where, where are the restrictions as stringent? Are you guys on lockdown? Is I mean, I'm sure social distancing, all that stuff is in play, but- Well, we are definitely on lockdown, but I have to tell you, everything that happens in the US, uh, John, hits us about two, two weeks to four weeks later here in Mexico. Now, that being said, a lot of cruise ships and people were coming here during the high season, which I was going to say was November through usually April. Um, it did get cut short because of the COVID-19, but we had a lot of people coming in on cruise ships. In fact, the Coral Princess, that was one of the big ships that had COVID-19, a lot of people were infected. That had just come out of the port of Puerto Vallarta and went in back into the sea when that happened. So I'm sure that the disease was here in January. I'm going to say it was here in January, maybe even December. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, of course, with the lack of tests involved, you can't really say how many people had it. But I think people, there was something going around then. Um, but we were not under lockdown for probably a month after the U.S. was. But I will say for a long time, people thought it was, I'm going to say half of Mexico really thought it was like a political hoax, that it didn't exist, that it was just all um, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And that is scary because of... You know, we're trying to say, no, this disease really does exist. But when you don't see it, it's not tangible. Everybody's like, we don't believe that's true. But then the order started coming in like Canada, Canada was saying, if you want to get out of there before we close down the border, you better go. They were saying the same thing with the U.S. So a lot of people did leave early, obviously. Uh, they left, I would say, like in mass, a lot of people left at once. I felt that it was safer to stay down here. Um, especially my doctors are down here. I had all my, my care down here for my cancer. So all my oncologists, my cancer doctor, my gastrointestinal doctor all down here. And also the cost of living, uh, the people I know was a lot cheaper down here. And um, I decided it was better to stay here. Now that being said, with everything on lockdown, it's been on lockdown now for about six weeks. Um, it is getting a little desperate because a lot of people here live day to day, meaning the tourism is really the biggest money maker here in Puerto Vallarta. That includes all the beach places where there's a lot of servers, bartenders, entertainers, and so forth. These people make their money on tips and usually tips only. So it's a big hit to a lot of the people here because there is nothing going on right now. You know, and in Mexico, there is no stimulus check or unemployment. unemployment. So it sounds like, to me, uh, that would be a very dire situation for the, that entire community, just because of the fact that, A, as you said, there's, there really isn't government support uh, without standardized testing uh, readily available. It's, it's really kind of hard to even know where you guys sit with all that. That had to be very scary for you uh, as you were, you know, you're battling cancer, you're going through all this uh, with a compromised immune system, to say the least, but you um, now are at the point where are you seeing um, are you seeing it start to repeal a bit as you know the states now where there's I think 31 states here in the uh, United States that are 
in some capacity peeling back the restrictions, in some cases completely lifted them, uh, which is debatable if it's too early for that or not. Are you guys seeing that in Mexico yet? Are you guys starting to peel back the, the restrictions? Well, nothing until June 1st, because I'll tell you why. All the beaches, the Malacone, everything like that is closed. There are some restaurants that are open for open seating, but of course, just half the capacity. Um, a lot of them have takeout. Uh, the pharmacies are open, uh, the grocery stores are open, but really anything that is non-essential isn't open. Even hair salons aren't open yet, nothing like that. Some places are by appointment only. I think it's really your moral compass that I've been going out. I go out to lunch sometimes, I've gone out and, uh, and had my nails done. So I mean, like I've gone out and done a few things because this is, this is my my whole moral compass is this. I need to help this community. That means I need to go out sometimes and I need to give money to this community and help others that are in this community. And not just with the food bank, not just with um, people giving money. You have to help these people because right now it's dire for people to have a job and to support their families. So I do go out, I'm safe, I wear a mask. Um, I stay, you know, social distancing, of course. I have my uh, Purell in my bag. Um, but I feel that it's important to still help this community because without it, there's going to be financial catastrophes that happen here. In fact, it already has. A lot of people have been having trouble feeding their families. All three food banks that I know of have people lining up at 2 a.m. in the morning when these food banks open at 7 and they're wow. waiting in line. Sometimes there's up to 200 people in line just waiting for a bundle of food. Wow. That is, um, you know, I can't help but, you know, I'm, I'm imagining this as, as you're telling me. And, um, and I'm thinking, you know, in, our, in the United States right now, uh, there's just so much bullshit, quite frankly, of people complaining that they have to wear masks and it's an assault on my rights and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, you know, we are so fortunate, despite the fact there's many hardships and people are suffering here and, and, and it has a massive effect on, on many communities. I'm not saying that isn't the case, but when you think about the fact that, as you were just saying, like for a small little community like Puerto Vallarta, that completely relies on tourism if you take that tourism away everything closes down and will it reopen is the the question it's it's a it's got to be a very uh dire situation and, and that's you know something to be said i think for what you're saying in the fact that you know what you're safe you socially distance you take the precautions but you're getting out there and you're supporting a community that helped you and helped you get through these difficult times in your life and now you're able to and now you're able to give something back. And what better way to do that than the gift of your amazing voice and your music? So I know that you kind of got on the, the bandwagon before a lot of other people did. Um, you are doing a live stream on your Facebook every Friday, 7 p.m. Central Time, right? That's Amy Armstrong on Facebook for those of you watching. Yes. In fact, we just had our eighth live stream on Friday. That's with Fernando Gonzalez. And mm -hmm. uh, now for the last month, we also do Sundays from 2 to 3 p.m. in the Sunday show, all that goes to charity. And in those oh, Sunday wonderful. shows, we've helped the Nacho Daddy employees. We've helped Grupo Garbo, which is five different bars, which is wet, um, margaritas, flamingos, Garbos, and industry. And we've also helped the Puerto Vallarta Food Bank. And then just this last Sunday, we helped uh, No Way Jose and their employees as well. That's wonderful. I mean, I, just from a karmic perspective, like to, to do something like that is, I applaud you. Um, and, you know, also for you as, a, as an artist, as a performer, um, it's, you know, you're one of those folks that like I, I myself signed both sides of my paycheck, so to speak. Um, and you have had to kind of figure it out on the spot from what you were telling me off camera. You know, you everything shut down, you had one last show, and then it was like, it was done. You're like, okay, so what do we do now? So you and Fernando, your partner, um, the, 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 the man down there that you're, uh, you're muse, if you will, and you're creating music right. with, um, as uh, anybody that does know that is, is watching the show or is familiar with Amy, Amy uh, has been performing for quite some time uh, with a longtime partner, Freddie Allen, uh, based out of Chicago, um, both very, very dear friends of mine. Um, now, 
on that, I've seen as Freddie has gotten down to come visit you a few times and support you like uh, a lot of folks have. Uh, have you guys um, had the opportunity to, uh, to, to look into the crystal ball of maybe performing together again virtually? I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, musicians that are performing in separate areas using a technology where he's in one spot, you're in another. Is stuff like that things you guys have thought of or right now just kind of going with what you know, works for you down I there? I want to. I want to. You know, he's in Davenport, Iowa right now, and he's doing his uh, shows. Um, but, you know, we both don't want to encroach on each other's spaces right now. We're trying to do – he's doing a Wednesday show and a Sunday brunch. I'm down here doing this. You know, it's weird because this is our 25th anniversary this year, and knowing that we can't be with each other performing is uh, terrible. But I know that he's um, – doing what he can to help other performers down there as well. And I think if we could get together and do this, I would try it. I really would. The problem is sometimes the service here in Mexico can go in and out. So I worry about that for a show, for what we're going to do. But, you know, I would definitely love to do that. And I've seen other people do that as well. I think it's great, though. I'll tell you this. God bless all the performers that are out there, putting themselves out there on you know, social media, because I'll tell you this, it's hard as a performer when you do a big song and you're really feeling it and you end the song and there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing. silence. And no, I know no energy, you nothing. can feel the energy, but you can feel the energy kind of from far away. But man, when it's not in front of you and you don't have a live audience, it is very difficult to put on a show with the quality that you want to put on. Now I've gotten used to it. And in my mind, I hear thousands of people cheering, you know, but I always, I always felt that way. So whatever I do, they're like, yeah, <laughs> they're going crazy. <laughs> baby. Every time. Um, no, I, I don't, I don't doubt that one bit, Amy. I mean, as someone that's probably seen you perform literally thousands of times, uh, you know, the, uh, the audience participation and interaction is a, a big part of your performance. Like, you know, you're, you're a natural in that kind of environment. So, but you know, as, as dad used to say, um, smooth seas never made good sailors. So it's good to step out of your comfort zone and, and kind of reinvent yourself. Um, so working as a duo, um, and you guys are doing now multiple performances, which is, which is fantastic. It's, you know, I feel I've said this to uh, other professional musicians that have been on the show, um, that very fortunate to have the technology available today that we're able to do such a thing. Um, and while, as we we're just talking about, yes, it's an adjustment and yes, it's, it's a little, it's difficult and it has things that it lacks. There's also, I feel those things that it adds as benefit where, um, from my understanding, you guys get in the upwards of like anywhere from, you know, three to 10,000 folks watching your live stream. Oh, That's yeah. incredible. You know, our first live stream, we actually had 20,000. 20,000. We did our very wow. first one because there wasn't a lot of stuff going on and people were just happy to see us and it was incredible. And then I think the next week we had like 17 and 14. Now we kind of evened out. I'm going to say we get a good three to 5,000 um, every time we stream now for the past month. And that's, that's an incredible amount. That's, a, that's amazing. A you know, that's, <laughs> and this is the other thing. People can listen to us again and again. So, you know, we live stream, but then if you want to, if you can't be there at seven o'clock, I know people who, you know, two, three days later, have been giving me a virtual tip. Oh, I just got to see you. Thank you so much. Or, you know, I missed one of them. Do you have a way to see it? Yeah. Now that we've downloaded them on our website, Duo Dorado, and also on YouTube, uh, people can see all the different ones we've done. So it's kind of great because it kind of, you capture a piece of history, a piece of a wonderful memory of music. And I love that part of it for sure. That's great because you're essentially getting, they're like killing two birds with one stone. Like you're doing the performance, um, actually three in a sense, because you're doing the performance, uh, you're capturing it and creating content and you know you're you're putting some money in your pocket and helping folks that need it as well in the industry which is something that um i think right now more than ever because the music industry is especially suffering with the complete lack of um the ability to perform right now outside of what we're discussing you know it's by far on the f uh, things i'm hearing here talking to industry insiders is it's looking like you know next year before we really see any semblance of uh, what was BC before Corona when it comes down to um, concerts and festivals and things like that. You know, we're seeing drive-in festivals pop up and people are getting creative, which is amazing. It's wonderful. And I think that with even once 
the restrictions are lifted and we're down the road a bit, I think people are still going to be, uh, there's going to be some PTSD there. You know, will people be as comfortable walking into uh, thousands Oh, I of people? think that's going to be a major issue. You know? I believe that that's going to be a major issue. It's not about it opening up. It's about the comfortability of someone sitting in an environment with others, even if you're far away from one another. That's the one thing that, to me as a performer, we're going to have to get try to get that as fast as we can back on track because that's a major part of when you're performing, how wonderful it is. I was just watching a concert online the other day, and this is how I know COVID is affecting me. Because as I was watching it, I was like, oh, those people are close. Oh, they're all, <laughs> how many Sorry. thousands of people are watching that? Oh, oh, oh. You know, because that's my mindset now because of dealing with this for the past, what, almost three months now. Yeah. And let's be honest. It's not like uh, I was just saying this to my neighbor the other day. I'm like, you know, April... I should say, you know, March was three years long. Uh, April felt like about a year. And now we're creeping into, you know, in the middle of May here. And it's slowly starting to seep back. But, you know, it's just, you can't, you can't have, you never could have predicted what we're all dealing with now. It's such an unprecedented time that uh, is happening all over the world. Um, and as here on event speak, you know, we're, we're international. We've had a lot of different folks from all over the globe that we've talked to that work in various industries and everyone has a very similar story to tell, you know, so it's, it's something that I feel if nothing else, um, we're all going through it. And especially in the event industry, which is, of course, a big part of the reason that Event Speak exists, as we are working hard to try to unite the event industry. But you know, Amy, I was uh, I was thinking about uh, you today as I was prepping for this and thinking back to the, geez, what, twenty years ago or so. I think a little. I think it was around two thousand one or two that you and I met, um, and I'll never forget. It. Amy was um, for you folks watching. Amy was. Uh, the resident diva at a fabulous cabaret in Chicago at the time. Uh, and, and younger <laughs> and so much prettier than I am now. <laughs> so was I for that matter. <laughs> but, but um, you know, a big group of, uh, of, my, uh, of my, my gay girlfriends. Uh, you know, of course, uh, the LGBT community, uh, LGBTQ community really supports the arts and in specific, of course, a fabulous uh, performer like yourself. And uh, I came into this, uh, this cabaret with a big group of lesbian girls that were just, you know, let's go have some fun. It's your birthday. Mwah! You know, and I remember a walk in and, you know, we're sitting there and I, Amy, Amy notices me and she's like, oh, look out they brought in a big old straight guy. And I remember right. you, you were just having fun with me, busting my chops every, between every song, if you could. And each time you did, there were another drink would appear, by the way. They're like, Amy bought you another drink. I remember I barely could walk out of that place by the time I was done. And you were like, hey, man, you know, thanks for being such a good sport. Like, what are you doing here? I'd introduce you to my friends. And you invited me to hang out. You were, you, uh, were living upstairs at the time. And, well, the next thing I know, it's, it's 20 years later. And here we are um, talking to You forgot to, to mention to them, I am not a lesbian, but... That's I play true. one on TV. I play one on TV. <laughs> no, but I, I work a lot in the gay community, obviously. I mean, like, I've been called an honorary gay, I guess, so that's good. I mean, but yeah, I love it. I love that. And honey, I used to say this years ago. I don't care if you're gay, straight, trans, fluid, binary, bisexual, whatever you want to be. If you want to come and listen to music, that's fine with me. And just watching you in with that big group of lesbians was hilarious. It's still in my brain to this day. You're a wild man, Big J. Uh, you know, I, Amy, I'm the same way. You know, I, I, um, you got to take people for who they are as people. And, you know, exactly. the, way that, the way that we um, impact each other's lives um, is, is the most important part of that. And, you know, people come in, in many different sizes, shapes, and backgrounds, and, and genders, and, you know, I, I applaud um, the community that, you know, the alternative community, the LGBT community, because it really has, for as much as it's been difficult in recent times and current political scenarios, but overall has made a lot of strides forward and um, have been able to really self-identify more than they ever have before. And you're right. The one universal language, and I've never seen more diversified 
groups of people than when I would go to your shows where you have a little bit of everybody together having a great time and united by music, which I think is just Isn't amazing. that the best? It's That's just amazing. Because See, I'll every tell you this about Mexico right now. I don't speak fluent Spanish. I don't. I took French in college. How stupid. Am I in France? No. But I have to tell you this. I can sing a song and then anybody in that room, I don't care if you only speak English or Spanish or if you're bilingual or whatever it is, music unites everybody. And I feel that same way about when I live stream. I cannot tell you the different people from different countries because of all the cruise ships I've done and people I've met that watch us, even stay up to watch us. We have a huge uh, contingency in Australia. We have a huge contingency in Canada. We have people that from all over the world that watch us. And it's the blessing that comes with this. Yeah, we can't do live shows, but I can do a live stream show and I can have people see me from countries I never even thought of, plus a bigger amount, because when you're doing a show like this, you can have 10,000 people watching you, whereas you'd have to have that kind of venue if it was live. For sure. And, you know, not to mention, it's like part of the reason that you can get that captive audience is you're, you're essentially making yourself available to the entire um, international audience that you've built over the last 25 years of your life, um, oh, yeah. which is amazing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it has been such a pleasure to have you on the show, Amy. Uh, once again, for folks interested to check out Amy, um, she does a live stream every Friday, 7 p.m. Central Time. And then you said on Sunday, what time on Sunday? On Sundays, I always do a charity event, and that's from 2 to 3 p.m. 2 to 3 p.m. on Sundays for the charity event. Yes. And your website is Duo Dorado, D-U-O-D-O-R-A-D-O.com for more information on Amy and her fabulousness. And Amy, I just I love you to death, and it's just so great to have you uh, in front of me again. And we definitely oh, thanks, honey. need to make a point to see each other one way or the other here sooner than later. But, uh, well, Big J, thank you for this opportunity. And I, anybody who's listening, thank you for going on to the, all these live streams and listen to all the different musicians and artists and people because it really makes a difference to all of us. So I thank you so much. And we thank you, Amy Armstrong. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Miss Amy Armstrong. I am Big John signing off for now. Thank you for tuning in to Event Speak. You can find us out on the web at www.eventspeak.com. Until we see you next time, please be sure to take care of yourselves and each other.